Hello, I'm Michael Redman, professional Go player. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Go proverb, Sabaki starts with a tsuke. And tsuke is an attaching move. So I'm going to offer a definition of sabaki, which is, sabaki is the settling of a weak group inside the opponent's sphere of influence by means of light and flexible play. So there's a number of key words here. First of all, the idea is that you're inside your opponent's sphere of influence, an area that is controlled to a certain degree by your opponent. So here we have an area that is controlled by white. There's a lot of white zones on the left side of the board here. Uh, there's also a position white has on the lower side. So white is controlling this whole area in the lower left part of the board. It's actually the attachment is where the idea of being light and flexible comes in. So for instance, um, to make a variation here, if we have black play a two space extension, this is actually, it's an okay move. It's a move, black had room to play a two space extension. And so black can do that. But this is not what I would call light and flexible. Black is making a stand there, trying to make a little territory. The potential problem with this would be that black does not have enough area here to easily make two eyes. And potentially white will have ideas of attacking this black group. There's also the fact that for the time being, white does have a tempo. White has sente, so white can play, for instance, moves like this. So with the attachment move, the idea is that black will force white to defend the corner because this is a more direct attack on the corner. And in the process of white playing some defensive moves for the corner and black playing some moves towards the side, Black will get a position on the side which is more developed than this position we see here. And of course, white will be getting some extra profit or strength in the corner also. This corner is probably going to be a white territory anyway. So the idea of using an attachment play to make sabaki, it works very well when your opponent has a relatively tight position like this, which is going to be territory anyway. You don't have so much to lose. And, and that's true of the idea that you're inside your opponent's sphere of influence also. It's an area where white has invested a number of moves, and black is sort of a newcomer in this area. Black doesn't have so much to lose, whereas white has already invested moves to make some territories here. And so you can um, even manage to offer a trade sometimes, which is part of the flexible part of Sabaki. So here we have a closer look at the local position. Black plays an attachment against white's corner enclosure. And the idea is that black is threatening to get into the corner with a move something like this. So it's a direct threat against white. And we can expect white to defend in some fashion. So when black has played an attachment against the white stone, white generally has a choice of either playing a hane on one or the other side of that black stone or extending from the stone that has been attacked. So for instance, uh, white could play here. In this case, black would uh, maybe just play down here. So I would say this is just a little bit more space than the variation uh, where black play, just played here. Black does seem to have a bit more space there on the side. Um, it's a three by two shape, which looks like it could be made into two eyes. Also, there's the fact that now black is threatening to jump into the corner here. So that's a big move that black has as a follow-up also. So generally extending like that is a relatively passive move. So for instance, if white played down here, that would be extending playing on the second line in response to black's move on the third line. So it would be very passive for white to do that also. Uh, black could respond by playing something towards the center. So it would be, for instance, a move like this or a move like this. Or black could even play a way to some other part of the board. And it would be relatively difficult for white to kill this black group or even effectively attack it. So I would expect white to play a slightly more active move. So it would be a honey underneath or a honey on the top. And most often I would say the honey on the top. I'll say that black can pull back in this case, and white still has to protect the corner. White will play here, and black plays here. In instigating this exchange of some moves towards the corner, uh, I would say that black has improved when compared to this position. I would say that black has uh, maybe even moved forward 
one stone. So this stone that Black has just played, um, Black also got this stone. So in a way, Black got two key points in improving the Black group. Of course, White was playing moves also. So White got an improved position in the corner. White has a strong shape here. White's corner is even stronger than it was before. So that's a trade. But that's the whole idea of sabaki being something you do inside your opponent's sphere of influence. White already had a strong position in the corner, and that was probably going to be White's territory anyway. So the idea is that with this exchange, uh, Black has made a trade in which both sides have been reinforced. But the idea is that the defensive side has gained more by that exchange, because in this case, White already had a strong position, and Black has created a relatively strong group from a position that was not even a group before Black did that. So that's the basic idea of Sabaki. Uh, just to uh, digress a little bit, when your opponent plays a Hane against the first attachment, the follow-up move to, for this is often a diagonal move. So it would be almost always a double Hane. That would be, for instance, a Hane here, or a Hane on the other side, here. Uh, so those are moves that could be thought of. It's a bit advanced compared to what I'm going to be talking about next. Strong players could think about what might happen if Black tried a honey like this, or like this, in this position. And I will be coming back to this with a little bonus segment at the end of the video. So Black has established a fairly strong position on the left side here, so let's get rid of these. And for the time being, I would say that the left side is finished for a while. White could move to the top side or the right side. And I'm going to start with the top side, White. Uh, pincering here. So when White has pincered here, Again, we see a position where white has a local advantage. So white has a position on the left side of the board here. And the only relatively weak white stone is this one on the side. So white has a majority of stones in the upper left area. And black just has that one stone inside white's position. So if we think of sabaki for this one black stone at F17, normal moves like this, for instance, or or like this, they're not exactly what I would call sabaki. So they're not light and flexible. And in this case, white will play a nice extension on their person. And uh, black still does not have a fully living shape. Although it would not lose the game, it is not what I would call sabaki. Sabaki starts with an attachment. So now we're taking a close look at the position in the upper left where black is about to start another local sabaki sequence, starting with an attachment again. So black's going to play an attachment against white's corner. When your opponent has played a hane against it, quite often the next move is going to be diagonal. So it's going to be a hane. I actually made a video that um, discussed this joseki in detail. So uh, this is one of the basic star point josekis. And I'll put a link for that video in the description for people who want to take a look at it. So I'll just go into two variations. Uh, first of all, when you play this double hane towards the edge of the board, it's offering to sacrifice that stone. So for instance, if white cuts here, white will be able to capture the stone. Uh, this is generally not going to be very good for white because black can play like this and capture a white stone on the outside, no ladder. And so since black captures this white stone on the ladder, black is getting a strong position on the outside and all of white's profit is mostly on the second line it's close to the edge of the board uh this whole sequence would be um, actually it would be very painful for white so this is an example of what white should not be doing the main variation for the joseki would be for white to answer with an atari from above and this is an example of a sequence if black plays here black has established a living shape on the side and so by playing this attachment at d17, let's just mark that one stone, by playing that attachment and the double hane there, the end result here, which is played well by both sides, this is a joseki, so it's a, locally it's an even result, but black has managed to make a living shape here. So that's how it has worked for black. And of course, white got a improvement, a stronger shape towards the side there. But again, this is a case where white already had a position there. This left side was already looking like a white territory, so black can afford to give that to white 
and I would say the defensive side has benefited more from this exchange. So that was another example of the attachment. Now we're looking at this position with the full board again. Now it's White's turn. Uh, maybe next idea is to jump into the right side. A likely move seems to be this invasion on the third line. Okay, so now we have a close-up of the right side of the board. White is invaded here. White is looking at moves towards the upper right corner or to the lower part of the right side. So we'll start with black playing a pincer here. This has stopped white from moving in that direction. To make sabaki for this white stone, it is quite common to see white playing an attachment on the third line. And when black covers on the side, a double hane. So this combination of the attachment with a hane is quite a quite common shape to see, and it's a very effective way to play it. So as before, white is thinking of sacrificing the stone on the second line. If black cuts here, black will be able to capture that stone by taking it like this, but white will be able to capture a black stone towards the center of the board. Black cannot escape the ladder. Black might play a uh, peep here, for instance, um, threatening to escape, in the, escape from the ladder. But you can see how white is getting a fairly good position there. It's almost a lie. So that's how this is working for white, sacrificing towards the side of the board to get a position towards the center. Another thing that might happen is black plays from the outside here. In this case, white will be trying to make two eyes on the edge of the board. And usually white will have enough room to, to manage this, or white still has options of running out towards the center of the board also. So to go back to this position, if black plays from the other side, this becomes a bit similar to the lower left corner where white is going to try to make shape by playing an attachment against uh, the black corner enclosure. So again, if black pulls back somewhere, white will have some room towards the side with a potential um, invasion of the corner here. So white can do that. Or if white wants to play a bit more flexibly or lightly, white can play just one honey and jump out towards the center. Black three is a relatively passive move. So it's quite possible that black will instead play a honey against the white stone. So this is a position where I think white will benefit from playing the honey underneath. Pulling back here, it doesn't really do a lot for white because white does have a very cramped shape there with the white stone on the side so close. It's, it's not really enclosing very much space. So this is a point where white wants to try to do just a little bit more than that and play a hane towards the corner. And if black goes after that one white stone, something like this might happen. White is already getting starting to get a settled shape on the side, or white can capture a black stone towards the center. So this is a ladder again, and white will have a relatively strong position there towards the center. So back to the hana here. If black pulls back, for instance, this will give white some extra room towards the side. If white plays a crawling move here next, white will have enough room to, to live. So, so for instance, something like this, uh, white would play a hane and then play here. White already has a shape that looks like it's alive. So if black plays the covering move here, white can jump out. White has a fairly flexible shape with at least one eye already, so white should not have too much trouble settling this group. So that was my explanation of using an attachment play to make sabaki, so it can be the first move of the process of making sabaki for your group. So I hope that uh, this video has helped people understand the basics of sabaki and to introduce people to this go proverb. Thank you for watching and sign up to my channel for more videos like this. Thank you.